Hello everyone, it's Umber Rays here and welcome to another unit review and you're going to notice something slightly different. Uh, recently I've had a little bit of time on my hands to finally get caught up on a couple of things. Uh, sub badges for uh, um, Twitch uh, as well as just generally thinking about you know some brand new graphics and what I've decided to do is make a brand new graphic style for the JP side that will be different from the global side. Now Currently, I'll probably be using the just the regular red version uh, for the global side. Uh, in the future, I might want to redesign it, but sometimes these can take a little bit of time. I uh, potentially want to think of something, you know, interesting. And I've also been working on a few other graphics for a few surprises that will be happening in the near future or potential surprises for the channel. So, um which may or may not involve a new game that could end up being pretty mainstream for my channel. That is not, not to worry, we are still going to be doing, of course, all the Brave Exvius stuff, do not fear. But I think that the JP side needed something a little bit special, so here it is. This is my new template. I'm also going to be using this for some of the Twitch live restreams too, and I'm pretty excited about debuting this. Uh, the one thing is, is you can see some flower petals over top of the uh, Brave Exvius screen. I don't know if I'm going to keep these. I generally like the way it looks, but um, we'll see how people feel about it right now. Kind of like it. I think it kind of adds a little flair to it, but uh, maybe people just want to see it. Anyway, with that all said and done, now we can uh, basically talk about our unit, our first unit review for this week and, well, this coming week. It's going to be a busy one for sure. So let's talk about the new CG unit. Now, I'm going to be very careful. Recently, I've definitely had a few audio balancing issues, so hopefully this is good, but it can be a little tricky to balance the audio sometimes uh, going between videos. But today we're here to talk about CG Folka and Citrus combo unit. Last month we got uh, Lid as well as Vina in a combo unit, and this month we're taking a look at the girls from the Veritas side. And I gotta say, this is probably one of my favorite units ever. Uh, it's definitely not the beach thing, but let's get one thing out of the way. There is no doubt in my mind that this is being sold on, you know, fan service. And I get that. Fan service is popular. There's a reason why, you know, sex is an industry, right? That, and while I think there's a lot of cuteness and charm in this limit verse, it's very easy to just see it as well. They put boobs in it. Well, women have boobs, you guys. Hell, fat guys have boobs. Uh, what ultimately, as they say in Dogma, makes a woman a woman is what comes down between legs. And that's not meant to be sexist or anything. I'm just saying if you're really just focused on boobs, I think you're going to miss just how great this unit is in general. And honestly, we give giant props to the... Um, just the animations outside of the CG one. Uh, just the water guns as weapons, the Folka getting embarrassed for trying to be sexy in the uh, win animation, as well as uh, just the Folka making those girls pay after the CG animation in their attack. All right, so with that all said and done, finally, now we can talk about Fitra. And I gotta say, I really like these units for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're TMR, 15 attack, 58 magic, 120 spirit staff. Pretty darn strong in terms of statistics, because other than super TMRs, it's kind of hard to find a really great staff uh, for healers. You have Yunas, you have the one from one of the trials, and there isn't really much that's easy to get your hands on. So this... Um, this Staff is really good. It also has an extra 20% spirit, and it gains one summon crystal per turn, which is great because, as it turns out, there are plenty of trials where you have to summon, and this is a pretty reliable way of getting it. So yeah, pretty well like it. Super TMR-wise, it's just 
Pretty annoying for Arena. 50% to HP and MP, 60% to Ice, Water, and Dark resistance. This is a pretty amazing Super TMR, all things considered. It's got a lot of elemental resistance, which is proving to be very important on the JP side, as well as just a lot of HP and MP makes a unit very survivable. And looking at both of these, well, I should say this unit stats, uh, not as impressive for HP as uh, Lid and uh, Fina were. They're, they ended up getting much more HP. You can see people who have them at about 15,000 HP, so only 8,000 on these girls. Not exactly the most impressive. A lot of MP though, 791 MP, pretty low defense, pretty good magic stat. And the spirit stat is the big one we're interested in. Being able to, you know, do the spirit trial is a pretty big deal. So I gotta say, that's really nice that we are seeing that. Uh, just a very strong unit in general. Now, limit burst wise, whoops, clicked right out of it. Sorry about that. Since I already have the limit burst maxed out, I don't need to swipe uh, left or right this time. Now, maxed out, it is a seven, at a 7 star max, 3000% 3 hit water summon attack. Pretty damn strong, high percentage on it, it's summon magic, so it's not going to be mitigated by damage mitigation. What's also interesting about this, if you look at the, um, the potential of this attack, I mean... It's not just that, it has an element on it, which could be good, especially since she debuffs for that element too. But the thing I probably really like about this attack is that um, it can be, you know, it's summon damage, so it can actually be boosted upwards. And I thought I saw something out the window right there that scared the crap out of me. Anyway, uh, this also maxed out 5 turn AoE debuff of 100% to water and light resistance, which is cool. Great. We'll talk about that in a second. 230 MP recovery. You know, that's pretty damn strong for an entire team. And fill summon gauge, 5 to 6 Esper crystals. That's almost a full summon. So I gotta say, this limit burst is pretty damn powerful for a whole bunch of reasons. And not to say the least that you could potentially power it up a lot of different ways. Now, she doesn't have any magic, but that's okay, because if she has a really good kit, we don't overly care. And starting off her kit, well, I mean, it's an extra increase of summon damage of 30%, recover 10% MP per turn, which is a lot of MP, 30% to spirit and magic. Pretty damn good, she has another 30% to magic. But then we get into two of her big abilities, the water and light 92 MP ones. Now, if you're aware about Volka, she basically has two abilities that can give basically protection to everything short of Berserk, and that's what these two abilities are, with one little extra bonus, is that they act, you know, they give something extra, which is some elemental resistance, too. I already love these abilities when Folka had them. The fact that we can get light or water resistance on top of it just makes them even better. And 92 MP may sound like a lot, but 10% MP recovery per turn, and the fact that her limit burst gives MP back, MP costs aren't so much of an issue. Equipping a staff gives her extra magic and spirit. That's perfect, that's what we want on her. 50% water resistance too, that's pretty nice. Now, Folka and Citra combo unit also has some buffing capability and this is one of the things where I think yeah this girl could slot into a few positions uh, on a team and it be really useful it's not just the summon thing but we'll get there she has AoE five turns plus 120 percent attack and magic or defense spirit but these abilities also give a little bit of extra killers versus undead or I believe demons and that's pretty nice you know it's not as high of a percentage to attack in magic or defensive spirit but if it also gives killers too it kind of makes up for the percentage that it's not getting provided that the killers are useful from there into her kit we get into some rather pretty damn nice abilities which use esper crystals and these 
abilities are just, you know, water and light summon magic attacks. But they, not only are they counted as summon damage, which, you know, is great, it gets by mitigation, but it uses the spirit stat and it's backloaded too. And as if that's not enough, it's also backloaded in the sense that it is, a, well, I mean, it's AT chaining. And, hmm, who do we know that AT chains? I'm pretty sure it's Satan as well as Axtar. Not bad, I'll have you say. Two Esper Crystals also is pretty low, because if you equip her own TMR, she's getting two Esper Crystals per turn, and you're more likely to get a few extra Esper Crystals off of the enemy, meaning that this is a reliable form of backloaded damage chaining, and she can hit a really high spirit stat too, meaning that she's survivable for magic attacks, and she can also do a lot of damage with her magic attacks too. Honestly, I'm really impressed. It turned out that this unit can do just a massive amount of damage, and we're only still in its her 6 star. She can also cast any summon in the party, which is great. Again, having that flexibility on a summer summoner is fantastic. Summer too, I love flexibility in my summoner. But another ability that's really cool is her AoE Accept Self 20% chance to charm. Wait, that sounds terrible. Oh yes, it also adds light element to your attacks for five turns. So, if you were saying before this video, wait a minute, she can't chain with Axtar, they don't have the same element. She can use this ability turn one and give him the uh, light element for five turns. It gives Axtar a potential uh, different element, although I believe Satan's uh, AT chaining is already water element, so she's good to go with Satan users. And if she's giving them, uh, Satan some different kind of killers to use, that's great too. But MP is not just er, relegated. I was trying to say relegated. It makes me sound smart. Uh, by using 75 MP, she can actually AOE regen 250 MP, split over 5 turns, and give a 5 turn water and light resistance of 80%. Very, very strong. Just a lot of elemental resistance and some MP regen over multiple turns. Again, very strong. Extra HP, extra summon damage of 50%. We're still getting out of her 6 star. I swear, we'll get there eventually. And her last couple abilities are a counter ability, which, you know, is pretty nice. Her counter ability just cures all status ailments and debuffs the enemy for water and light resistance. Pretty good there. And she has, uh, of course, her W casting ability, which just allows her to W cast pretty much any of her abilities. So that's great too, considering how powerful they are. And from there, we get into her 45 uh, MP last ability or six star and AoE. One turn plus 100% water resistance, AoE. Three turn. Well, basically, it's a degrading. For the next two turns, it's 75%. For the next two turns, it's 50%, which is, you know, okay. But it also gives a five-turn 200% limit burst fill rate, which is a pretty high fill rate to generate the limit burst to use her strong limit burst that we've already talked about. And it grants her a 12 MP ability for four turns, which is basically a Lunara-style chaining water hit attack. So the Lunar Chaining family gets a little bit bigger. This is not going to be very useful though because it's incredibly weak. Literally, the attack power is 50 on it. But it only costs 12 MP. So I guess it's just extra chaining. And it could chain with Axtar's chaining, but not Elementals. Uh, no, no, I don't think you can do it. But it's still kind of interesting that it's there. For equipping her own TMR, whoops, that's not the right one, there it is. Equipping her own TMR gets her some really nice benefits, 100% to all status ailment resists, and her, you know, TMR is already a really nice staff for her, so just good to equip that. Uh, and not only that, she also gets an extra 50% stats from her Esper that she gets, and one Esper Crystal per turn, making that two per turn with her own TMR, like I said at the beginning. So, really, really strong. 
her last couple abilities that we're going to talk about. First of all, her 120 MP cooldown that also uses for Esper Crystal, so it's pretty expensive. It is AT chaining again. It is available turn 6 on a 5 turn cooldown. It is a very high percentage backloaded AT chaining summon attack that is both water and light. So if you use her limit burst first, oh, is the enemy going to be hurting very power from this powerful, powerful uh, uh, damaging attack? My brain's starting to die. But it's not only that, this also heals. 2,500 HP with an 18 times mod and an AoE 3 turn 30% damage reduction. So this ability is just stupidly powerful. Absolutely stupidly powerful and probably way, 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 way too strong, but it is on a cooldown so you can't use it all the time. Thankfully her 7 star also has a higher damage, water damaging attack that uses, again, Spirit is Magic. It is backloaded, it is AT chaining, and it also heals. So, you know, why not? And from there, just another 50% summon damage. So if you're keeping track, that's 130% boost to her summon magic, as well as a limit burst fill rate of 100% naturally, and some more HP and MP. Honestly, it's just kind of insane how much how well this summoner is built. Out of all the summoners lately, I've definitely been complaining by the fact that, eh, you know, they they really just don't feel that good, because the summons just don't feel that good for the most part. But a summoner with higher summon stats, uh, you know, with the potential of, who knows, maybe four star, well, we're probably definitely getting four star summons at some point. But having a summoner here that can just do so much in terms of support as well as damage. So here we'll just get this going. So as you can see, just chains perfectly and a fair amount of damage for not being elemental chained either. Now, oh, and look at that, we even have our summon charged on turn two. Pretty powerful, just pretty damn powerful. And next up, we're going to just use her light generating ability so we can get that on people. And we'll also throw, I don't know, her spirit boosting stat. Doesn't really matter. Okay, well, Aerith got hit. Kind of sad, but not the worst thing that happened today. Alright, so next we'll just give some buffs to the party, because we can, and we will get our Axe Stars her just using their nice ability to make them stronger too. So with the Spirit buff, oh, yep, she's doing her thing, gets up to about 2,024 Spirits, so that'll boost her strength a little bit nicer here. Now, this is the part where we can potentially do a lot of damage with her light chaining attack. It would I wish that she also had a light chaining uh, element ability, like her water chaining element ability in her 7 star form. The 7 star form only uses MP and doesn't use Esper crystals, which is, you know, pretty strong considering that it still counts as summon damage using her spirit stat, which again, as we've established, is very, very powerful. So let's just show off this with, I believe, my spell bear on star? Yes, yes. Oh, what the hell. Let's just get... I don't see any reason to exclude anyone. That's just rude. So some nice amount of backloaded damage for a fair amount of chain damage that we're getting there through the elemental and everything. Now, of course, we can summon any Esper we want. Uh, we're just going to be waiting, though. We want to try and charge our limit first. So for that, we're going to get Axe Stars to take the bullet uh, for a turn. Unfortunately, Aerith is still charmed. She's absolutely just enthralled with our beach units. 
didn't quite get there. Well, let's regen some MP in the meantime. Alright. So, we'll show off this attack without being chained into anything. Uh, this will give a light debuff too, remember, of 100%. We haven't been doing anything in terms of a debuff yet, which I think is pretty damn awesome. So, taking a look at this. I mean, I'm not going to complain about the CG animation, really, but... Again, I just love the tidal wave. Whee! Whee! can see we got a nice amount of MP back and now we've also debuffed a hundred percent for both water as well as um, sorry water as well as holy which is good news since well guess who uses the holy element for a incredibly powerful attack Aerith, but we also have our Axe Stars chaining for the Light Element too. I really absolutely just phenomenally love uh, this Beach Units kit. Uh, last month when Lid and Fina came out, some of their kit were missing a couple of things. For one thing, if they were to use one of their elemental imbuing abilities, it kind of shot you in the foot because it could cast Stop on you. Uh, which could be potential, uh, or was it charm? No, it was charm, sorry. Which could potentially be a problem for setup and execution. But here, you know, Folka as well as, or Folka and Citra have the wonderful ability of protecting the party from all status elements, except Berserk. And therefore you can do a, just a, go away, go away Moogle. You can do a lot, lot of damage with them. They could also fit way better into a team than most summoners do. Most summoners right now just don't ha really need to be able to do some other role so that they can fit the party properly. And here you're looking at a unit that can just give a lot of good support, either through elemental protection, status resistance, or just general buffs and AOE damage reduction. All of that works together very well to make these girls just very, very, very powerful. So their kit ended up being way better than I thought it would be. Uh, everything about these girls I think is fantastic. Uh, the TMR, uh, you know, maybe it could have just a little bit more stats, but this is pre-enhancements, meaning that I can get more out of this than I already do have. Uh, they have a they get just so much stats. Uh, their super TMR is great. Their kit's fantastic. Everything works together really, really nicely. And she can still, you know, just go together super well with an Axtar or a Satan, the top damage dealers. And she can still help you get those summon quests done while supporting the party. Absolutely love this unit. Fantastic unit. If you don't have her yet, uh, there are plenty of good, way great ways to get her pretty easily, so I would recommend go out and get her. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.